Many of our clients choose to extend their time in Europe, either pre or post river cruise, in one of the Swiss towns of Lucerne, Zurich, or Basel. Switzerland is different than other European countries, most notably because they weren't involved in either of the world wars and therefore didn't have to end up rebuilding their cities twice during the 20th century. This country of 9 million has the highest nominal wealth per capita in the world and is in the top 10 for GDP on a per capita basis. Most people here speak German, but there are four official languages, with the other three being French, Italian, and Romanche. 85% of the people in Switzerland speak either German or French at home. And many river cruise passengers will take the cruise line extension, which is excellent for keeping things easy. If you do decide to do it on your own, it's really fairly easy, though, to get around by train here. If you're flying in or out of Switzerland for pre- or post-cruise, you will quite likely use the Zurich Airport. Zurich and Geneva are two of the world's important finance centers, and when people joke about having money hidden in a Swiss bank account, those accounts are likely here in Zurich. The other two things that scream Switzerland are clocks, which are everywhere, and chocolate that is as delicious as it looks. Zurich is a city that's designed for walking and for being outside, even in the winter months. It's about 20 miles from the Alps mountain range and sits on the northern end of Lake Zurich with lots of pathways and public space on the Limat River that runs through the middle of town. We spent our day wandering the city scene in Zurich itself and then took a vernicular at the edge of town up to the mountain above where the Dolder Grand Hotel is situated. There is also a public park with an outdoor skating rink, a hockey rink, we are in Switzerland after all, and some hiking trails. When people think about Switzerland and the mountains falling right into the water, it's Lucerne that they have in mind, this medieval village has been here for about a million years and is a common port stop for uh, folks doing pre or post river cruise stuff. So here you can uh, take a, a boat out to a railway and up to the top of the mountain. Good idea, what we learned today was is that make that a game day decision because if it's a day like today where it's uh, raining in Lucerne, you're not gonna get quite as much out of it. The mountains are all covered. So you can't see all the natural splendor that is here. But on a sunny day, you can see how spectacular that it would be. But it's not gonna stop us from seeing the other sites here in Lucerne anyway. Lots to do even when it's raining. This town of 80,000 is the most common pre or post trip for people on Rhine River cruises who come here to take in the beauty of the mountains that isn't available in Basel. Much like Zurich, Lucerne is a city that is at the head of a lake with the Rus River running right through the center of town. The river separates the Altstadt or Old Town from the newer part of the city. The Old Town is a great place to walk around and just get lost in. You can even take a tour on a horse-drawn carriage if it gets cold, or if you don't feel like walking anymore. Once you're finished there, you can walk across the famous Chapel Bridge to visit the new part of town. The Chapel Bridge is often seen in pictures of Lucerne and is the oldest covered bridge in Europe. Just past the old town are remnants of the old city walls. The Lion Monument is also a short walk from the old town. This sculpture, completed in 1821, was described by Mark Twain as the most mournful and moving piece of stone in the world. It seems that hotels and viewpoints on the hill with a vernicular ride to get up there is a staple of the Swiss experience. In Lucerne, the Hotel Gooch sits watch over Lucerne, the lake, and the surrounding areas. This hotel was built in the 1870s and has had an interesting and varied history since then. Currently, it's a luxury hotel and restaurant and a common place for meetings, banquets, and weddings. The rest of our visit to Lucerne, we just wandered the streets like locals, checking out the farmer's market, visiting one of the many craft breweries, or just enjoying one of the best views ever from a Starbucks. Even on a cloudy winter day, the scenery in Lucerne is spectacular. So here's something we don't get on our side of the Atlantic. We're right on the border between Switzerland and France, as you can see here, and on the other side of the river is Germany. So three countries all coming together at one point on the Rhine River just outside of Basel. This three-way intersection of three countries in Europe made for an interesting situation in two world wars with the French on one side, the Germans on the other side, and with the Swiss being neutral. Today, Basel is more well known for its museums as well as the place where people start or finish their Rhine River cruise.
The city is built around the Rhine and, much like other parts of Switzerland, is designed for walking and exploring. The historical center of Basel is located on the southwest side of the Rhine in the Gross Basel or Greater Basel. Here you'll find medieval houses, concert halls, the cathedral, and theaters in the historic center, but you'll also be able to see the other side of town where the chemical and pharmaceutical companies are located. The river ships have a number of different docking stations, so if you're disembarking here, ask your crew staff whether you can walk into town or if you need to take a tram. If you're embarking in Basel and you're taking a taxi to the ship, don't let the cab leave until you can actually see your ship. The airport here is about 20 minutes out of town, and if you fly in here, you need to be careful after you've collected your baggage to take the correct exit. If you're bound for Switzerland, there's one exit with the Swiss passport control. The other exit is for France and Germany, and if you take the wrong one, you'll end up having to clear immigration twice.